Hi, I'm Robert Jeffress, pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas and Bible teacher on Pathway to Victory. And we're so glad to have you as a part of this uh, launch of what we're calling the 401 Challenge. And what we're asking people to do is to commit to praying once a day, every day for 40 days for our country and specifically for an end to the uh, coronavirus crisis that we're facing and all of its devastating effects. You know, so many people, Christians, and I'll include myself from time to time, uh, kind of live by the motto, if all else fails, pray. Well, prayer is not the last resort. It should be our first line of attack against those things that are evil and wrong. And we're asking you to consider becoming a part of the 401 Challenge. Now, I wish I could say that I came up with this idea. I didn't. It was all really the brainchild of my a wonderfully gifted daughter, Julia. And she's going to be on in just a moment to explain how she came up with this idea and uh, what's her motivation for it. Uh, you may wonder, why did we choose 4.01 p.m. to pray every day? Well, this is based on Psalm 4.1 that encourages us to come to God in our time of need to deliver us from our distress. Now, if you would like to consider becoming a part of this challenge, we'd like to hear from you. There's a place on your screen that says, yes, I'll take the 401 challenge. That is to pray once a day for 40 days at 401 in the afternoon, wherever you are, for God to bring an end to this coronavirus crisis. And uh, we would love to have you join us in doing that. And by the way, if you do check that box and join us, uh, you'll uh, receive a free download of my new book coming out in June called Praying for America. I also want to encourage you to join Julia's Facebook group. She's going to be doing regular postings and videos about this prayer emphasis, especially over these next 40 days. But as I said, uh, Julia has taught me more about prayer than I've learned from any theologian or read from any book. And uh, she is our uh, minister to girls at First Baptist Church in Dallas. She uh, is an uh, LPC, a licensed professional counselor, and she's also author of the best-selling book, Pray Big Things, in which she encourages all of us to pray not for small things, but for big things. And I think that coronavirus <laughs> certainly uh, qualifies for a big thing to be praying to God about. But Julia, I'd like to ask you right now, if you would, to share with our audience exactly how you came up with this really brilliant idea and what your heart is about prayer. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I, I didn't come up with it, so I can't take any credit, um, but that was a kind introduction, Dad. Um, <laughs> but honestly, I've just been spending so much time, like many of us have, watching the news, worried, hoarding toilet paper, I'll admit it. And, you know, I know better than that. I'm a Christian. I know who's in control. And that means I know ultimately who can fix everything. And so I was talking to my dad about it. And honestly, we were just talking about it kind of like a modern day plague. I mean, this is a crisis. But those of us who know Jesus, who have the Holy Spirit, we know that prayer works. We know that the Bible teaches us that God honors big prayers. And so we were talking and just thinking, what can we do to get Christians together the same time every day to pray big things? My life changed forever. Whenever I moved from prayer being a have to or thank you for my lunch to on my hands, and knees begging the God of the universe to pay attention and to show up in my life. And I believe the scripture teaches he wants to do that. He longs to be gracious to us. He hears us when we pray. And I believe it's time to unite the troops. And we all want to be a part of something. Everyone wants to be a part of something right now. Why not be a part of the most important thing, something that we know without a doubt will change history, praying together, hiding together in prayer, for our world. Uh, that's a great word, Julia. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to give us some specific things uh, to be praying for. I might ask you also to read Psalm 4.1 if you've got a Bible there easily or uh, can read that to us to let people know why we chose 4.01 uh, as the time to pray. 
but uh, you know, we do need to pray big things. We need to pray specifically. And uh, over these next 40 days, uh, there are some specific aspects of this coronavirus crisis and its effects that we want to be praying for. And so, uh, Julia, would you read Psalm 4-1 to us and also just share some things on your heart about what we should be praying for during this crisis? Yes. Yeah, so the, the most important thing we're trying to emphasize is people praying together at the same time. But if you want some specifics, which I believe there's a different element to that one when we pray scripture and when we pray specifically together, and this is what we're asking. Three things. One, set your alarm at 4.01 p.m. Secondly, pray 4.01. There's something different about praying scripture when we're praying God's words back to him. And thirdly, to pray the acronym FIRE. So Psalm 4.01 says, answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress, have mercy on me and hear my prayer. And then the acronym FIRE, it's just a way to remember really how to think about um, the most important things and the things we need to concentrate on, which is those who are on the front line, those who are act actively fighting it um, themselves, but also those, of course, who are treating it and other people. I is for the invention of a vaccine, the invention of treatment so that we can get better and get past this. R is for the reach of the gospel during this time. This is an incredible time in history where people are looking for answers and we have them. If you are a follower of Christ, you know, you know what the future holds and people want to hear. People are open to the gospel right now. So we're praying that people accept Christ as their savior very, very plainly. And E is the end of this pandemic. You have not because you asked not, James 4.2 tells us. So let's start asking for this to be over. Uh, that's a great word, Julia. And, uh, you know, uh, I would encourage people who don't know Julia's and her husband Ryan's amazing story to get a copy of her book, Pray Big Things, in which she talks about her own journey through prayer and how God has miraculously answered prayer. One of those specific prayers was she was praying, she and Ryan, for triplets after three miscarriages, that God would replace those lost lives with a uh, life for every life that was uh, lost. And uh, God answered their prayers with triplets. In fact, I think I just heard those answers <laughs> to prayer banging on your door trying to get in to see you. But it's a really inspiring story. Pray big things. And for those of you watching, if you will partner with us in praying, praying for our country, praying for our leaders, praying for first responders, praying for a vaccine and treatment. would love you to join the 401 challenge by uh, checking the box or clicking on the box you see right there. And uh, we're not asking anything from you other than you commit to pray with us. But we will send you just free of charge, a download of my new upcoming book, Praying for America, that comes out in June. And remember, you can go to Julia's Facebook group and again, free of charge, receive videos and devotionals about the importance of prayer during this time. Now, today is our national day of prayer. Our president has called all of America to pray, regardless of your political affiliation. He reminded us in his proclamation that in times of crises, America has a habit of turning to God. And uh, Abraham Lincoln on March 30th, 1863, issued a declaration of prayer and fasting. Uh, we're in a war right now. It's a different kind of war than the civil war that Lincoln lived through. It's a war against an invisible almost virus, but uh, I think it's more than that. I think there's a spiritual battle going on here as well. So I'm going to ask you, wherever you are, to join me in this um, inauguration prayer for our 40 days of praying, and then remember to pray every day at 401. Would you join me together in prayer right now? Heavenly Father, we have to admit to you that this pandemic, in our eyes, has come out of nowhere. It was a surprise to us, but it didn't take you by surprise. We are, know that you're a God who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving. And Father, we pray that you would have mercy on our nation, have mercy on our world, relieve us from the distress of this uh, pandemic that so many people are hurting from, or hurting from the effects from. And Father, we know that you are not partial toward any nation. Any nation that reverences you and turns to you will be blessed by you. 
Any nation that rejects you will be rejected by you. And today we claim the promise from 2 Chronicles 7, 14, made to your people Israel thousands of years ago. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Father, we are praying for your forgiveness. We pray for your healing. We pray for our president. We pray for all of our leaders. We pray for the first responders that you would give them discernment and special power from you. We pray for an end to this pandemic, whether it be through a vaccine, whether it be uh, through uh, its disappearance from our culture, whatever, Father, you choose to do, we would pray for relief. And most of all, Father, we pray that as this world feels more and more helpless, people would turn to faith in you and your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we realize that most of us will not die from this pandemic, but we'll die from something one day, and all that will matter will be our relationship with you. We thank you for the way thousands and thousands are coming to faith in Christ because of this crisis, and we pray that even though sometimes we may feel like we're in prison, as Paul said, the word of God is not imprisoned. May the word of God touch the hearts of people and bring them to know Christ as Savior. And we pray this in the name of the one who came and died and rose again, that we might have eternal life, Jesus our Lord. It is in his saving name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Julia, thank you for joining us today for this uh, inaugural uh, kickoff of our 401 challenge. And again, let me remind you, if you haven't done so, click the link that says you'll be a part of the 401 challenge. And uh, don't forget to join Julia's Facebook group so you can receive updates and devotionals from Julia as well. I pray for you and your family for God's protection and God's blessing upon you in these days ahead. Thank you for joining us from First Baptist Church, Dallas, and pathway to victory.